gonna get you. I'm a space boy. Oh, whoa, whoa. Oh, hi guys. Welcome to another episode of JDM Masters. And on today's channel, we are going to do a very small car review. And it is these right here. These are blocky Mazda RX-7s, special initial D made by Kato, 112 scale. And we're gonna be doing a full car review of this. So you wanna know more about it? Come join us. So what exactly is Initial D? A lot of younger viewers may know this from uh, the video games that you play in the arcade or perhaps the animation, but originally in 1995, it was a manga. Now this is the first issue of the Initial D manga in Japan. Uh, maybe you might not have seen it. Here's a couple of pages on it. And this was started in 1995 by Shuichi Shigeno, uh, a popular manga artist and author who was very influenced and uh, inspired by the Toge or Mountain Pass illegal street racing scene that was prevalent in the 80s and the 90s. The main character here, known as Takumi Fujiwara, was an 18 year old high school student who got somehow into street racing and borrowed his father's Torino A86, which was already a popular car used for street racing and drifting back then, and battled many different characters um, using different different cars such as also of course the RX-7 and this, uh, the Skyline GTR, the Civic Type R and Lancer Evolution as you can see here in this book which we'll probably talk about later on uh, which showcases a lot of the uh, initial D characters and the real machines. Now of course this had the influence on uh, the general public about the identity and performance of 90s sports cars and that franchise have also made a lot of different different products uh, including mini cars and today we're going to be looking at a new collectible that came out last year made by Kada, a Chinese company that also specializes in the sort of block building technology something like Lego's Technique that is a very highly detailed model and it also has the all-important official licensing from Mazda Motors and also Kodansha uh, which now, this is a 25th anniversary product and uh, available online uh, through Kada and many other different websites. Uh, we're going to be looking at just the construction and reviewing uh, the model itself. So let's have a look. Now the amount of details that's gone into this kit is pretty impressive and fans will be pleased to know that when they open the box, you can see two big panels of illustrated artwork of the character Keisuke Takashi and his later version Project D FD3S over here. The real Skate Takahashi version over here is the later uh, Project D from the fifth stage and you can see here in the background the um, this Turnpike Sky Lounge and his later version uh, FC3S as Yo, well. Oh! So the instruction booklets comes in three different books and let's have a look at the first page gives you more beautiful illustrations that come straight from the panels of the manga. You have Takumi Fujiwara again, his A86 Toreno, Ryosuke Takashi and his FC3S, Keisuke Takashi and his FD3S right here. Have some interesting panels from the original Japanese manga and Takeshi Nakazato in his Skyline GTR R32. Uh, Kate has only made four models of these and basically they also have some other small sizes and also interesting character ones which we're going to show you now looking here at the instruction booklets it is really interestingly easy to understand because there are no words or only references with the actual part numbers now here is the indication for the plastic bags which are numbered like this so you can't actually go wrong 
all the parts that are needed to make this section are in this plastic bag and it describes here uh, with the shape you have to match the shape and it's very easy to follow directions of what you should do in order we found it pretty straightforward uh, assembling all of these pieces for both us well actually our mini was the one who actually assembled a majority of them so a special thanks goes to her uh, for a lot of her hard work in filming and also making these models possible now just in case you might think you're missing some parts here at the last page of the third book is every part that's included in the kit and how many pieces that are actually uh, present. So let's have a look at the model itself. And here we are, the completed 112 scale KDAB Mazda RX-7 Initial D version. Just to give you an idea of how big this actually is, here is a Tomica 164 scale model right next to it. The model itself is 35 centimeters long by 14 centimeters wide and it comes in an optional kit included uh, with a stand that uh, you can take it on and off in the official plate here as well and it's very impressive looking uh, even for a blocky model for a car that is originally curvy what we like is also the stickers that come along with it here is the original Japanese market only Anfini badge logo and the Japanese number plate Guma 41 and with five actually six numbers uh, which reflects the anime appearance in the legends uh, also the all-important Red Suns sticker here uh, you don't have to put it if you don't want the initial diversion uh, in the rear we also have the very accurate RX7 emblem sticker and also the unfinished sticker now the tail lights here are not functional let's take up this off the stand and check some of the details so let's look at some of the functions and features of the model what we like is the suspension which is actually a real coil spring design now this rubber must actually hold the steering uh, mechanism together along with these gears uh, which with the additional kit once it's inside this part uh, it can actually turn into an RC car the rear has a double wishbone working suspension with actual coil springs rubberized tires and wheels which look kind of like the ones from the spirit are the doors uh, do open all the way like this and you can see also the interior which have made some effort to make it different uh, from car to car and also the in red seats which uh, reflect the earlier model the dashboard and the instrument cluster also seems to be taken from the real car and not only that uh, you can also open the rear here like this and interestingly there's a bottle of NOS which I think of course uh, it was never used in the initial the anime and uh, some trunk space but what's the most interesting feature is that the front uh, opens up the bonnet so you can choose whether they have the lights uh, up or down so of course do be careful when you're opening these things uh, it is a block after all and it will uh, come loose if you don't take care now here's the engine room which they've gone into some detail in putting uh, the features of the rotary engine sticker down here and the mechanism uh, which resembles a couple of the real parts like the air filter and a couple of gear mechanisms here which are connected to the optional motor the overall shape uh, even though it is a block shape looking at here like this they've made some effort to actually incorporate some of the curves of the real car by making the door uh, slightly at an angle with these sort of really cleverly designed uh, levers putting it at an angle and giving that slight impression of the curviness of the actual FD uh, down here don't be alarmed is on done on purpose in order to make the sloping front in fact it moves a little bit a little incomplete here uh, with the fenders uh, to replicate the smooth going down lines of the fd3s a lot of effort taken into some of the details are uh, also on the width of the bonnet and you can see here very gentle curves uh, with these kind of curved blocks and the door mirrors uh, which of course are supposed to be stuck on the doors and not uh, the windshield side 
Interestingly, down here, uh, we can see that they've just chosen to make it rather flat, but RX-7, which has a curved rear windscreen uh, featured um, with this kind of interestingly curved inward and curved uh, sharply onto the corners here. So it doesn't really open that well. The rear tail lights, um, yeah, do kind of resemble uh, the FDs. Uh, very shapely curve. You can see they put more rounded blocks on this part here as well. The rear wing, which can be interchanged uh, for the Project D version, and also uh, the muffler, which, you know, just in appearance, gives you that feel that, hey, this, this is an RX-7, of course. Let's look at the FC now. Of course, the FC being an 80s model is much more block and therefore easier to shape with blocks. And it has the same Red Suns sticker on the rear, very important. Interestingly, the grade of Takashi Ryosuke's car, we're not sure if it's the GTX, so they decided to go with the catalog GTX over here. And for some reason, the GT Limited over here. But what we like in the front uh, is the Mazda emblem, uh, which is actually recessed on the real car. And these pop-up lights can actually be operated. They're spring-loaded, unlike the ones in the FD. So let's have a look at how to actually get these headlights out in the Passenger door, you open it up, the glove box opens up like this, and there's actually a lever that you press, and the headlights actually open. Very, very nice small feature uh, that's incorporated into this FC rather than the FD. Going to the rear, this resembles much more like the FC3S. Uh, correctly fonted stickers here, Savannah RX-7 and the huge Mazda emblem over here. Also a small trunk the key opener sticker right here. Uh, the squareness of the original car makes it easy for block designers to make this look very, very much like the real car. The rear also opens up, rear hatch, and again, another NOS bottle down here for some reason. The curved rear windscreen, also represented by uh, the curve design uh, angled transparent block. Uh, since the doors are more straight in the real car, nice to, of them to add the door handles as a separate block down here. It's more simple, the interior uh, with the original seats also of a different design. What's also impressive is the actual cockpit design uh, also follows very closely to the FC3S model. Now, it's the same underneath here with the exact same design of the rear double wishbone type suspension and the front single arm. What also we're going to look at some details here in the frame construction which is very impressive. Uh, the, the designers have really considered how to increase the chassis rigidity even for uh, a block model like this. You can see here uh, long plates uh, incorporated with many different uh, long blocks and it took some time to construct all of these but once everything was put together we were worried whether they would just fall apart but just even holding the model like that, it, it doesn't actually flex at all. All these pieces actually hold the suspension and wheel mechanisms really, really well. And because the designs of these clips actually snap on, they're not just simple press in type blocks. Now, here, if we took a look at the roof uh, and the windscreen design, these are sort of generic. But where does this come from? <laughs> So we removed the bonnet and the windscreen to show you the inside working mechanism uh, of the Kada model. Now turning the steering wheel here, you can see it's connected by these different gears uh, which in turn moves the steering wheel realistically. It's a very clever mechanism and here we can take a close look at how the lever for the pop-up headlights work. Uh, if you give this a hard press, it actually pops like that. Very clever design uh, of the different uh, levers and uh, mechanical parts. Uh, once this center part here is re uh, removed and replaced by the uh, motor, it actually drives the steering um, through these gears down here. You can see it on this side as well. And interior has the gear shift and the center console uh, with the stickers that make it look like a lot like the real car, which is really a plus point. And also even a nice 
handbrake lever mechanism, which is on the right side uh, of the model, which is also on the rear car. There's also rear seats down here, uh, which is a very nice realistic addition. Sold separately are also action figure blocks of the main characters we have here, the Takashi brothers Keisuke, Ryosuke, of course main character Takumi Fujiwara, Natsuki Moge, and interestingly Kyochi Sudo, who isn't one of the main characters which they had the car made. There was not a Lancer Evolution 3, maybe they're going to make it one, uh, but we were surprised not to see Nakazato in that. Here are the characters, uh, it's block figures, and they're 8 to 9 centimeters tall, uh, with a lot of detail, especially in the clothing, very interestingly, uh, as it is like they appear in the series. Uh, the hairstyle was also uh, very intricately done uh, for each character and their style, uh, even though it's a block figure. A lot of effort put into making this a very official looking uh, product that you can actually use as a playset. As you can see in this illustration, uh, it actually fits in the car and gives a well rounded feel to being immersed in the anime and the series rather than just having the cars. A uh, special mention to the very cutesy eyes which kind of do look like, yeah, how it is depicted in uh, Shigeno's style of drawing. So these are available uh, at about $30. Uh, they're also separately, and of course, each of them uh, is the official Kodansha sticker, so don't worry, it is official. So we hope you enjoyed that little review of the Kada 112 scale uh, RX-7 FD and FC3. So I'm going to show you another little souvenir from the initial D collection, and this is a sports towel with the Fujiwara Tofu then uh, from Takumi's 86. Uh, if you're a collector, maybe this would be interesting. So let us know in the comments uh, if you'd like us to review other mini cars or toys uh, related to cars. I've got a lot back here by the way. Oh, and also maybe this TVL and Tomica Limited Vintage Neo FD3S RX7 early version. Uh, very, very highly detailed. Uh, let me know if you'd like me to go through some of these and also uh, maybe some other car related products. So, until next time, guys, peace out. Love you.